Welcome to my new uh, screencast. Uh, today I want to talk about a strange bug that I uh, just experienced in working with Entity Framework 6 and um, unit testing assemblies that are instrumenting, instrumentating uh, Entity Framework 6. First of all, I want to explain how I set up this uh, pretty simple solution here, which you can see. Uh, first of all, I have a library, data access, which um, has a NuGet package, um, a dependency on Entity Framework. I installed it here. And it has a pretty simple model, entity model with one uh, entity. Okay, that's it. And now I just created a unit test project which references this project and has also a NuGet package dependency on Entity Framework. Uh, since uh, Entity Framework 6, I guess, I don't know exactly, but um, uh, now Entity Framework references Entity Framework .sql server uh, DLL2, which will be pretty important soon. And now just uh, take a look. You see here are some classes. I'll explain this, explain this later. And now the, just see what happens. I just created a sample test. Here you can see some simple test. It's just, uh, it's not clean, you know, but it's good for explanation. I'm just opening a context to my uh, entities and I'm just checking the count on the entities and um, asserting if the count is zero. Okay, when I hit run this test, the build starts and mm -hmm. After some, okay, I just do it again so you can see I'm not cheating you. The test is running and the test succeeds. Everything is okay and I just can hit run all two and it succeeds too. That's okay. Now assume I'll do another test. I just prepared this one. Just will paste it in. You can see that's some other test. The test actually is empty, does nothing, and this test has a dependency on this deployment item. It's a simple CSV uh, file. So I just introduced here a data-driven test. That's how I test data-driven. But I don't test anything actually. When I now hit run test on this some data-driven test, you see it's okay. It does nothing, but it's okay in the in the mind of unit testing. Okay, now what happens when I hit run all? That's a bug I wanted to show you. I just, you saw, I, I changed nothing important. It's just I'm testing all of those methods, my simple test and the data-driven test, and now um, it's not, um, um, it, it, uh, it don't pass it. So when I, just to show you, when I just comment out the deployment and the data source and hit run all again, <coughs> it works. So you see it has some, something to do with this deployment item. Just do it again to get the error. Here it is. And what it says here is blah, blah, blah. The entity framework provider type system data um, entity, as, uh, as entity SQL Server SQL Provider Services mm -hmm. registered in the config file with the invariant name is not there. Make sure the assembly qualified name is used. So the point here is that this um, class he searches is, not, is um, inside this DLL and since we don't use this DLL explicitly. Uh, this strange bug occurs and we have a very, very simple solution to come around with this. And for this solution I introduced this test base class. The test base class you can name it like you want and if I just comment out this line of code and hit run all again, both tests are working. So what happens? Here, I'm just doing a very senseless line of code. I'm generating a vari variable or instantiating it by using 
the instance property of SQL's provider services. This class, this type, sits in, you see it here, System Data Entity SQL Server, which is this assembly which I meant, this one. And now just because I do this, obviously the test runner knows, hey, he needs this class, thus he needs the assembly too, and now everything works. So that's the solution. Just go inside your assembly and uh, in your test assembly and do it somewhere there. The very important point is there are some hints in the internet showing you that this one will work too. Let's see. Run all. Yes, it does. The type of. Now instance is just the type of SQL Server Provider Services. What's important about this, this solution won't work if you are building on team build, which means not on this machine but on your build machine. Then the strange error which you saw earlier will occur uh, during your team build too. So my <coughs> advice is just use this variant and it works on both sides, on client side and on uh, team build side too. That was it and I hope I helped you. See you later. Bye.